Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we're here today to talk a little bit about Quake Champions. I wanted to start doing tutorials that coincide with my personal progression inside of Quake Champions. The beta is going to be running until the 21st of May, and of course, we could potentially be getting more opportunities to play the game in beta form as it moves forward towards its final release, whenever that happens. Bethesda has taken time with Elder Scrolls Legends, and I imagine it and Bethesda are going to take just as much time to make sure that they get Quake Champions as good as it can be. That being said, as a new player to Quake, as someone who is just diving into Quake for the very first time, I had a lot to learn about Quake, even in its brand new Champions form. There are still many things that existed in previous Quake entries that exist in Champions that are sort of barriers for entry, and I see a lot of new people online giving the beta a go and struggling with it. They're asking themselves questions like, why did that guy not die? Why does he seem to take so many shots? Why does he, why can't I kill anyone? You know, why, even though my aim is pretty good, why am I struggling with this? Why am I struggling with that? There are a lot of different components that we are going to talk about in the future, but today I wanted to focus on two very simple concepts, and that is pickups, specifically your mega health and your mega armor pickup. Now there are three maps in total in Quake Champions currently. If you play in Team Deathmatch, you'll have the opportunity to play all three of these maps. There is one Mega Health and one Mega Armor pickup per map. Now each map has its own location. These locations do not rotate or change. So one of the first things you can do as a new player is to start to learn the maps a little bit more. Learn where the weapon pickups are, but most importantly, understand where your Mega Health and your Mega Armor pickups are. These are basically the two primary objectives that you want to vie for control over when playing Quake Champions, even in Team Deathmatch. They are very important items, and they are going to turn the tide of the battle for your team. You may notice a lot of people not picking them up, and your team does really well, and then the next game your team does really poorly. Chances are the other team was full of, or at least had some, Quake veteran players, or at least Quake players, who had this knowledge in their grasps. That means that they have been actively hunting down and claiming those Mega Health and Mega Armor pickups. Now the way Mega Health and Mega Armor work is that they overcharge your health pool or your armor pool. So if you are running a very low HP character like Nyx, you could potentially boost your health past a more tanky character like the Ranger, Scalebearer, so on and so forth. And the same can be said for your armor pool. There's a lot of value to having these items attached to your character each and every time you go into a gunfight. So what do you need to know to repeatedly farm and claim Mega Health and Mega Armor? Well, it's really simple. The fact that both of them have a 30 second cooldown once they've been retrieved. This is not a map focused cooldown. They don't just spawn at the same time. You're gonna have to do a little bit of math and a little bit of time calculation for yourself. Let me give you an example. If my team rushes Mega Armor and picks it up at, I don't know, let's just say the five minute 30 mark. That means that Mega Armor is gonna spawn again at the five minute mark. 30 mark so you have to do a little bit of math one of the things that i find is if you have complete control over that location and you can wait a couple seconds to get an even number so the math is a little bit easier for you go ahead and do that of course this works for both mega armor and mega health the best practice advice that i can give you is to focus on just farming and obtaining mega health and mega armor almost like in a circle basically make a route around the map grabbing weapons and then coming back for armor coming back for health now, if you're playing alone, this is just something that you can do and focus on. You don't really have to worry too much about whether or not your team is coordinating. Um, you will have to, of course, worry about the enemy team if they're being consistently aware of these items, and you will have to deal with them. If you're playing with a group of players, some friends, well, then you can designate roles. You can have one player who is going to consistently watch over Mega Health. Maybe someone else watches over Mega Armor. Maybe you decide that based on the health pool and the armor pool of the champion that the individuals of your team are going to play. And of course, you can have someone who is the countdown guy who just knows, okay, mega health in 10 seconds, mega health in 15, we got mega armor in 15, let's get to these locations, ladies and gentlemen, let's go claim these things. That's really the biggest thing you can do for yourself. It is a core component that is necessary to see success in Quake Champions. Even if you have the best aim this side of the meridian, you're going to run into another player eventually who has aim as good as you or better than you or maybe even less good than yours, but they're going to be stacked with mega health and mega armor if you keep letting the enemy team claim these items. That's why you might be playing Quake Champions right now and wondering why you can't kill anything, even though your aim is on point. 
Now we do have one other very important pickup on the map, and that of course is quad damage. Quad damage sits at a 120 second cooldown, but it doesn't really matter for you to count it or worry about it once your team claims it because you're actually going to get an announcer call out when quad damage is 15 seconds away from spawning. And at that point, everybody's going to pull to quad damage and start going after it and hunting for it. So uh, quad damage, it's obviously important, but you don't have to worry so much about counting the counting the timer, counting the cooldown on that. You can just let the game announcer do that for you. Obviously, there are many other components to Quake Champions that many of you guys may be struggling with, including weapons, weapon pickups, your personal aim. These are all things we will discuss in future videos. For now, I want you to head on to Quake Champions, grab some friends. In case you didn't know, you can go right over to the Bethesda website right now. I'll have it down in the pinned comment. You can sign up for the beta, and I believe they're just giving out beta keys. And the beta is going to keep running until the 21st. I believe it ends at like 4 p.m. EST. So you've got a lot of time, an entire week basically, to sit down and play Quake Champions. It is PC only. Take the advice I've given you here, and hopefully you'll start to find a little bit more success in your next outing as a Quake Champion. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other questions or concerns, things you might like to see me cover in the future with Quake Champions, feel free to throw them down in the comments section below. And as always, remember to play smart, remember to play to challenge yourself, but most importantly, remember to play for fun.